Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder, and welcome aboard the beautiful Aigle. This is the second French premium ship of this update that I'll present to you in a first impressions, and this is a rank 2 battle rating 4.3 premium destroyer. And the package costs 30 euros. <laughs> Let that sink in for a moment. The ship introduces us to a new interesting caliber 138.6 millimeters five turrets at that with 500 rounds of total ammunition some secondaries torpedoes the ship is decently fast and it's really good looking i like the camouflage at first glance it looks fantastic but then when you play it when you compare it to other ships and when you get in certain scenarios you realize a ship is not really something you want to buy to begin with, and certainly not for the 30 euros. First of all, for that price, it should be at least rank 3 as a future grinder. Because at this very moment, there is no tech tree to research. And honestly, while there are also a thousand gold eagles and seven days premium, and if you pre ordered it, also some fancy title picture whatever it's not worth it that's the tldr now why is that well it has to do with that the ship is basically all about the main battery firepower and that is mediocre and so the rest kind of collapses in of itself and if you go through the details you realize why the rest of the ship is also not really convincing so let's go right into it First of all, the guns. They have a good caliber, and this is reflected in the ammunition and its TNT filling, because that is actually not bad. So the HE has 3.4 kilograms of TNT with 36 millimeters of penetration. That is decent. The muscle velocity with 700 meters per second could be better, but is sufficient, and at longer ranges, you don't lose that much velocity the same feel you get from the 5 inch 38s from the Americans. And then we get the SAP BC, and that is literally a semi armor piercing round. So it has 2.5 kilograms of TNT. That is more than double the TNT floor that you get from the American SAP round with the high yield. But it also travels at 700 meters per second. And the penetration at a thousand meters is 63 millimeters. At 5,000 meters, it's 44 millimeters. So it's a high yield, really low pen round. And when you face up tiers versus cruisers that have some armor, it really isn't all that great. If you hit really thinly protected parts, the shell does great damage. It really does great damage. Just like, for example, the Russians with their SEP BC round. But to hit the targets is a problem for multiple reasons. And the greatest is the gun handling, because the turret rotation speed is god awful. It's 5 degrees per second. So you cannot quickly switch to other targets and be done with it. And because you only have 100 rounds per gun, you literally can run out of ammunition quite quickly. And also, the 24 rounds in the ready rack, once they're empty, the fire rate, well, drops to 10 rounds per minute. So, 6 seconds. It's not that bad from the initial 5 seconds, which is also not that horrible if you compare it to the 7.5 seconds from the German Navic destroyers. But you feel it. And then there are the ready racks. They are literally in open boxes on the upper deck. So if you get hit, they blow up. That reduces your already limited ammunition amount. You take damage, rate of fire goes down. Then we come to the secondary armament. We have four 37 millimeters guns with 4,000 rounds of ammunition. But there are some of the worst 37 millimeters in the entire game because they are single shot. They are on par with the horrible 
German 37mm single shot. They are basically useless. They are absolutely useless. They have only AG, it doesn't damage, it's bound to the main gun, so it doesn't even serve as AA. Uh, you have another 37mm uh, separate model, doesn't really matter. And then as backup, you have two twin 13.7mm. So even Japanese destroyers with their 25mm arrays are significantly better at dealing with patrol bolts, with planes, with anything. So you're highly vulnerable at close quarters because you can't turn your guns and you don't have any sort of defense mechanism. You also don't have depth charges, you don't have rockets, hedgehogs, mortars, whatever. So the only other armament are your torpedoes. Again, interesting diameter, 550 millimeters, the 23DT torpedoes are at first glance not that bad. You have six of them and without the torpedo mod they have a range of 9 kilometers which is sufficient and 72 kilometers per hour of speed which is also not that bad but certainly not on the higher ends of speeds. And the explosive mass is 308 kilograms. It's an okay torpedo, um, but you do not have that many. Um, you have two triple launchers and that's it. Now, one further thing that I really want to highlight is the ship has no armor. And when I say it has no armor, well, most destroyers don't have armor or anti-fragmentation plating. But this ship dies to 40 millimeter bow force fire. Now it takes a couple of rounds, I admit. It soaks up some, but other destroyers take literally no damage from 40 millimeter high explosive. This ship does. And that is frightening. Because even if you knock out an enemy destroyer's main armament in an ambush, it just switches to its secondaries and just blasts you a new one. The front Amorak is also right at the waterline and so is the rear one which is actually a little bit lower so just aim for the front Amorak and the ship will die a horrible painful death now let's talk about the economy because as I said 30 euros for the pack is an absolute ripoff for a destroyer that is ranked 2 and then let's talk about the silver line modifier. Just to put things into perspective. For 1,600 golden eagles, which is like a third or almost a quarter of that, you can get the USS Frank Knox, which is rank 3 and has a significantly higher silver line modifier and is a rank higher. <coughs> The Frank Knox, the, the Moffat, and many other destroyers of rank 3 have a silver line modifier of 4.0 times 2.0. You have only 2.55 times 2.0. Meaning instead of 1200% silver line income, you only get a mere 765. And you kill less, you are less versatile, you can carry less games you don't have a tech tree to make a real lineup to carry games the performance is not really great for me personally the ship is not fun and i absolutely wouldn't recommend it from the economy side so it's more or less economical sorry for that pun but it had to sink in so i hope you understand why i didn't make a fully fleshed out ship review on this one um, there is a high chance that I will make a ship review on a battleship in the foreseeable future. Um, tomorrow I'm uh, talking to a guy which I will get the stats with, but that is a lot of work and mostly really boring to watch. So, you know, I do it in all secrecy as usual. But this ship, I had high hopes. Now, one factor that is absolutely critical to understand why the ship doesn't kill all that much has to be summarized like this. I talked you through the ammunition. The HE is great, 3.41 kilograms, but 3.22 
is the TNT filler in the 5 inch 38 HE. And that also comes with a proximity fuse if you choose to do so. And kills aircraft. This one doesn't. It doesn't even have any sort of flux shell or anti aircraft shell. And HE barely does any damage versus a similar tiered destroyer. Hell, even low tier destroyers soak up so much HE. But you still want it versus patrol boats, versus superstructure hits if somebody is bow in. Maybe versus some cruisers where you can't pen their ammo belt, armor belt, whatever. And then there is a really critical problem with the sap rounds. It does great damage if the shell goes off. But this is like an armor piercing round basically from the characteristics. But with really low pen. Yet it needs 6 millimeters of fuse sensitivity. In other words, this is not like a base fuse HE that just gets ignited. The fuse gets ignited when it just hits even very very thin hull structure like steel or whatever. And then goes off a little bit inside of the ship doing lots and lots of damage like the German 128 millimeter base fuse. Really fantastic great shell. This one needs to either hit something really lightly protected or it needs to hit something in its path like a, a boiler something. And if you have that low volume of fire with that low amount of ammunition that's just not really gonna happen all that often. So despite your great performing shells on paper in practice, it's just better to just flood the enemy with shells like the 5-inch 38s. I admit, I'm massively spoiled by the 5-inch 38s from the Americans. But here's a problem. Even if I were not, then I had to deal with them every single battle. There are Moffats, there are Frank Knoxes, there are so many people out there. And one further thing. To this day, I have not met another Egler in battle. Maybe maybe I just played at the wrong time of the day. Okay, maybe the French are nocturnal people. Well, I have to sleep to go to work tomorrow. But honestly, I did not see another Egle. And that alone also tells me that this ship is not really a real hitter. This is not really what makes Gaijin a lot of money. Maybe people are also hesitating because of the price without looking at the performance and the fact there is no tech tree to research. And to be honest, I don't know and I don't care. I had some hopes for the ship to be better and I hope that Gaijin will rework the damage model so that the HE performance gets better so it matters. And here you can see I'm actually running low on ammo. And I did not really misfire all that much. And here you can see 9 kills, survivor and terror of the seas. Yeah, that was a decent battle for my standards. But if I would have been in a Frank Knox or a Moffat, I would have done substantially more versus the same opponents. Or even going into another ship, a lower battle rating one. And look at the civil lines. 85,000. Doesn't sound bad. But in a Moffat or a Frank Knox or whatever... I would have done with that amount of kills and that battle time 130, 140,000 civil lines. Not really a great ship to really get. I said it all and that's it for me today. Let me know in the comment section your thoughts, your opinion. Have you played with it, against it? Let me know. And as usual, please give this video a like with it. Subscribe if you want to see more. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see each other on the battlefields, in the skies and on the waves of War Thunder.